on that similar sort of theme, I mean, the next question is about opt-in versus opt-out. Let's concentrate on the sort of the way forward for this, because I know in a lot of email uh, communications, it's the double opt-in that is the preferred way of contacting, and that's certainly what a lot of the email um, automated processing uh, tends to focus on. Steve, have you got any experience about um, you know, the, the problems of that? Well, I suppose this, this is the big change, isn't it, in that we are now looking at consent has to be an informed choice we were given, and you, know, you have to explain exactly what you're going to do with that data, which, and we'll get on to what goes into your opt-in boxes a little bit later on. But what GDPR is meant to be is the end of the pre-tip box and the end of the silly wording, you know, do you opt in unless you're opting out if the moon is in a certain part of the sky, filling it forward. You know, it's meant to be, I'm giving you my data for these reasons and I am happy for you to use it this way. Now, this is what's led an awful lot of people to try and reconsent their entire database and sometimes it goes spectacularly wrong. Um, but again, trying to get people to opt so where Morrison's went wrong with this, for example, was they ended up on the wrong end of a £10,000 mortgage penalty from the Information Commissioner because they emailed a load of people who'd already opted out of marketing communications from them to say, oh, do you, do you want to do that? Do you want to opt back in? Now, £10,000 is a huge amount of money. Um, that will change under GDPR. Uh, not Maybe not immediately. You won't start seeing these eye-watering fines level immediately, but opting in and taking a positive choice is now going to be the new norm, at least as far as consent is concerned. So that's why the discussion, I think, around legitimate interests is really important, because if you are just going to annoy your user base and have people complain about you because you're trying to get them to opt in properly, where you haven't got the right permissions to contact them in the first place, this is where you might fall back on some other justification. So I think this this is what is causing an awful lot of people now to look at their database, like Weatherspoon, and say, well, this is useless, we're just going to delete the whole thing. And I think there's going to be a much more subtle response than that. But certainly if your business is based on you know, a load of bought-in databases that you just spam the living daylights out of, then I'd be very concerned that you've got any kind of work in that database at all, because it will not comply with what GDPR expects from you. Thank you. Harry, David, any comments on that? What do you think the way forward is going to be? It's just, I think we're unanimous in that all of us have got to subscribe and, and make sure that we we have everything cast iron. I, I think honesty is the best policy. Mm. If, if you say, I would like this information, this is why I would like the information, this is what I propose to do with it, this is how long I propose to keep it, these, these are third parties that we have a close relationship with, have a granular approach, say, can I keep your data? And then have another question, can I give this to these interested third parties? So honesty is the best policy with this, is my, my view. David, in privacy notice. Yeah. So you've got to work on your on. privacy notice as soon as possible. Because any consent that you get from now till the 25th of May, you should be really doing it on the best practice of the GDPR. Mm. So get your privacy notices, privacy notices, sorry, um, absolutely spot on as quickly as you can. And there's lots of examples. Hotline to the lawyers. Then. Okay. Um, Pick up the ICO. <laughs> <laughs> David, I mean, how do you see the way forward on that? Do you see everybody doing that or in your practical I, experience? I I, in my experience of going into companies that say to me, we've started, it, they've started thinking we're going to sort the consent out and they're looking to get the opt-ins rather than the opt-outs. And I think there's two things they should be doing before that. And, and I think that... Um, Steve and Harry have touched on that. Firstly, they actually need to look at their data and sort it out and tidy it up. They're going to have data, companies have data going back far, far too long. They've got data they haven't used for years. They've got data that isn't relevant. They've got data that isn't theirs. Um, and they need to really get their data into a current and consistent form. The second thing they need to do then before they start going off is you've got to look at what you say to your customer about the consent you're trying to get. And the consent statement is quite key because if you say to them, this is what we want consent like this, they're giving you permission, if they opt in, to match that consent statement. If you then say in six months' time, oh, I wish we'd added that in, you're you still having to go back mm. and ask them all again yeah. because you want to change the consent you've got there. So the priority is to sort the data out and to sort the consent statement out in the way that you think you'll want it 
going f as far forward as you can actually think. It's not just about what do we need this, this month, what do we need this year, because every time you want to update and change that privacy statement, um, then you're going to have to go back and reconsent everybody. On the other hand, you don't want to go, we just like your details and we'll use them in any way we want. Because you won't get that. for the future, because they'll say, I don't think so. And they won't, you won't get the opt-in. So it's getting the balance right between saying what it is you actually are trying to do as an organisation and then trying to, and then going out once you sort that, into um, getting that consent. And consent can be done in a positive way. Too many people do it in a negative way. It's like, oh, we've got to ask the data protection questions. But if you talk to your customers in the way that says, this is how we'd like to communicate with you, these are the ways we're going to, we could communicate with you, what do you actually want us to do? Do you prefer mail to email? Do you prefer text to telephone? Mm. Let them have that choice. Don't make it appear like a positive, mm. and you will raise that level of consent. The minute you try and make it look like a, we've got to get boxes ticked, and we're, gonna, you know, we're, we're holding your data and might do strange things with it, your consent levels will drop. So it's about getting the wording right. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, David.